obviously you're good enough to be here. They chose you, the matchmakers whom I have confidence in and the guys that I listen to brought you here. Show me and everybody right now, who are you? What do you got? Tell, make, me, make me say I got to have them in the UFC tonight. Right. That's it. And if you don't do that, then, you know, it doesn't happen tonight. Right, sorry. And like Laura was saying, it, it's not like it can't happen down the road, just not happening tonight. Right. Uh, all right, let's ask about the people that you got in. Bellagio, he started the night off. Uh, would he be kind of the MVP of the night? Well, I would say the main event was the MVP of the night. But um, obviously, Oki's a, 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 a close second. I mean, you know, he beat a Muay Thai world champion, kickboxing champion, and did it striking. And, uh, you know, listen, he, he was a two-to-one underdog. Nobody told him that. You know what I mean? He, he, was, he, he didn't get the fucking memo. He went out there and fired away, and anything can happen in a fight. You see it every Tuesday in this place. Two-to-one, three-to-one, four-to-one dogs winning because they want to win. Is that the kind of example you would give to people to be like, hey, watch that performance? Because, I mean, he did, it was just all out aggression. Like, we're not, we're not trying to save anything for the third round. Every performance is different. There's, there's been decisions that I've taken, guys. It's not like, oh, you got to come in and finish spectacularly and you got to be a three to one dog. It depends on the fight. It depends on how you fight. It depends on, you know, there's a lot of different factors uh, into in how I decide whether you should be here or not or whether I want you here or not. Yeah. Uh, I did want to ask you about Thomas Peterson as well as the heavyweight. Um, you know, obviously, heavyweights, tough. it's just tough to find quality heavyweights, mm -hmm. right? Is it, a, is it a little an easier bar of entry, I guess, to get in? Or, or would, was he a guy that you just were blown away by tonight? Thomas? Yep. Yeah. D total domination. He absolutely dominated the kid that was on the Ultimate Fighter and, you know, has experience. You know, he's got 13 fights. He's 10 and 3. He dominated him, finished him, and, yeah, no, he, he, he earned a shot tonight. He, de he deserves to be here. And, and when you look at the kid, he's 28. He's in his prime. He's 8 and 1 with seven knockouts and performed tonight the way you would want him to perform against a guy with, uh, I mean, he, he was a big dog, but, but he's got 13 fights and he's 10 and 3. Yeah. So, yeah. And then last, I'll ask you about the main event, because I said maybe Bellagio was the MVP, but you think maybe Carlos was the one that stood out the most tonight. 100%. How, how smooth that guy was, the way he moved, the combinations that he was putting together, how relaxed he was. Um, first round, he landed 70% of his strikes. UFC average is 44%. Pretty much everything that guy threw landed. Nasty. That, 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 that kid put on about as good of a performance as you could ever put on tonight, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. A lot of these Brazilians, we haven't talked to them yet, but a lot of Brazilians have been coming through this season in Contender Series. Obviously, they're looking to November in the show in Brazil and saying, please put me on there. I want to fight there. Do you know, I mean, has that card started filling up yet, or will you try to get these Brazilians on that card? Yeah, listen, if he wants to be on that card, I'll throw him on there. We can, we can always got room for one more. So if he wants it, I'll do it. I dig it. Uh, and then let me ask you about Timothy Kwan, but like you have that where you say guys sometimes are just too young, right? So what do you recommend? If a guy comes here, he puts on a great show, and you say, hey, it's just too young, what's the recommended path for guys to, well, okay, let me get here anyway? Saying he's too young meant he didn't show me tonight. Bo Nickel fought here. I mean, with, with a bunch, not much experience. You know, the, the list goes on and on of guys that I've taken with, with, with no experience. I just didn't see it from this kid. You know, I didn't think he had the power. You know what I mean? His power wasn't fast, fast as lightning, st stood on the outside, fought a good fight, is definitely a talented kid. Um, he's just not – I just don't think he's ready for the UFC. You get in there and, – and, and the Canadian kid was fucking durable, man. Durable, kept pressing forward, wanted to win, didn't come in here just to fucking lay down and go home and, you know, get beat. Um, tough, durable guy, but, yeah, t Timmy just didn't have it tonight. Nice. A couple outside of tonight. I uh, haven't seen you in a couple weeks. I uh, did want to get the latest update on Conor McGregor. You know he likes to mess with us all. He sent out a tweet uh, that had like a, a, an alleged fight pass graphic of him and Chandler in December, end of year. What can you tell us about the latest on, on Conor? And is, is he in the mix for that December? I don't know how that got out or whatever. It wasn't from fight pass. My team was telling me it was an AI. Uh, it looked fake. It looked like it was yeah. handmade. It wasn't real. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if, if that was the case, you you would have heard it from us first. Well, we've seen billboards. You'd have got a report from me on Instagram. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, is he in the mix, though, for December? We're trying to figure out because sometimes he says he can, then he says he can't. Is Who? he even in – Connor, is he even in discussion for December? I have no clue. We'll, we'll see how this plays out. Nice. 
I do want to ask you about uh, Sean O'Malley as well, obviously new champion, star. What can you tell us about metrics or just information that you may have about where he stands already as a star? Mm -hmm. Well, we could talk about fight, uh, uh, the Contender Series when he fought here. He had the biggest numbers on the Contender Series, uh, you know, the first however many seasons. It was millions. He had millions of views. Um, so we knew right away, and we started to move him that way. And uh, he was, obviously, you know the gate in Boston. It was the biggest gate ever in the history of the Boston Garden that wasn't the Celtics finals, right? And uh, it, was the, it was the biggest uh, Bantamweight championship of all time, pay-per-view-wise. So, um, yeah, I saw there was some talk about me whispering in his ear, you're going to make a lot of fucking money. He's going to make a lot of fucking money. <laughs> That's a fact. Uh, do you have a kind of a leader in the clubhouse of what's next for him? I mean, obviously, Cheeto won that night. You got yeah, Rob that, out there. The last two days... Uh, yesterday and today, we have put together fights all the way up into March of next year. Yeah. Care to let us know what that is? Yeah, when I'm ready, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> nice. Last thing I want to ask, and I don't know how involved you are in this, but we, there was a report that came out today of a letter that you guys sent along with the NBA and the NFL to the U.S. government about cracking down on piracy and getting the DMCA Act updated to, to immediately bring down streams. Just curious how much involvement you have in that, what you can tell us about that. We've been cracking down on piracy for years. I've been talking about piracy for 10, 12, 13 years. Um, we've always taken a strong stance on piracy, and we always will. Yeah. Hi, Dana. Yep. Hi. Um, I'm just curious. You know, we just saw O'Malley well, win the title first or second, I guess, from Contender Series. Is there somebody that you think will be the next champion from Contender Series? Well, it's funny you say that because, um, you know, the war room that we have at the office where we make all the fights, there's a uh, – so on the wall, there's different stickers that go beside um, the fighters' names so that we know where they came from. Red is, is the ultimate fighter. Um, blue is the Contender Series. And I think yellow is looking for a fight. And if you look at the whole wall, it's all blue. I mean, the whole wall is blue. This show has created um, so much talent from, you know, top 15, 10, 5, to a couple world champions now. So um, this show has become, you know, not just something that we love to do every Tuesday night, but it's become a very uh, vital part to, you know, the organization and to matchmaking. You posted about your home in Maine of uh, somebody trying to get in. Can you tell us about that experience, what, what that was like? Do you fucking think that you're going to break into my house and there's no cameras at my house, you fucking idiots? I mean, it's just, it's crazy. I don't know. I'm assuming the guy was breaking in to try to rob the house. And uh, my sister and her husband and some of his friends are up there visiting right now. And, uh, yeah, the guy came up and tried to kick the door in a couple times and then noticed the camera was there, tried to rip it off and rang the doorbell freaked out and ran away and uh they called you know my guy who, who who handles my house up there called me and said that uh you know he's, he's calling me at 4 30 in the morning his time I'm like uh oh something was going on up there so I answered the phone and he said somebody just tried to uh to kick your door and, and and rob your house or do whatever we got video footage and we're the police are going to post it in the morning I said yeah fuck that send that to me right now <laughs> yeah that dude woke up and was famous the next morning and uh you know, the, the Levant uh, sheriff up there made sure that the t they, they had him within a few hours. So, um, yeah, we got him. It looked like he had a knife in his hand, or was it something else in his hand? What I don't know. It looked like he had something blinking in his hand or flashing or, yeah, I don't know if he had a weapon or whatever, but, yeah. Listen, whether you're in Vegas or anywhere else, don't fuck around around my house. Good things are not going to happen to you around my house. I promise you that. So, yeah. We also just saw a Korean zombie retire. I wonder if you could tell me a little bit about him, what he means to you in the UFC. Oh, the zombie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that event was so badass, and the way uh, the people reacted to him retiring and to him losing. You know, he's one of those special guys. He's very special, man. The, the zombie has, you know, not just the Korean fans, but fans all around the world. You know, everybody's got a zombie. I had a zombie T-shirt for, for a long time, too. And he's been so fun to watch, and he's such a good human being, such a good person. Uh, I'm happy for him. 
and his wife, and I, I, I wish him all the best in the next chapter of his life. And you touched on a little bit about maybe who's next for O'Malley, and I'm just wondering, what, what is the likelihood that it would be Marab? I know that there is some controversy of what, him not wanting to, to fight. He wants Aljo to have the rematch. What's, the, what's your idea for that? Everybody in this room and everybody who watches this video knows how I feel about this shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hate it. Hate it. And uh, if that's, why did you even get into this sport if that's your mentality and the way that you think? I don't even want the title. I don't even want the championship. We're friends. We're this. We're that. This is not. You can be friends with everybody in this business. There's a lot of nice people in this business, a lot of good people. This is not about friendship. This is about finding out who the best in the world is. And if you don't want to find out who the best in the world is, this is not the place for you. You should be somewhere else. There's plenty of places to fight where they don't give a shit what you do. It doesn't work here. And I know you said you have fights booked all the way through March. Uh, is one of those the women's bantamweight title? Um, we got lots of fights. I literally drew up a list this big um, in all these places. If things play out, you know what's crazy about this shit? Every year, I say, how do we beat last year? How do the fights any get, get any bigger than they did last year? Then we sat in the room yesterday with, um, you know, obviously the matchmaking side and the, uh, the op side on where we decide which cities, countries, and states are available to go. And then they all come in and they, they, they funnel them through me and I decide where we're gonna go. So if things play out the way that they did yesterday and today and, and, and the way that I'm thinking, because there's if, if this happens, we do this. If this happens, we do this. And we're gonna have some fun next year and go to a lot of new places that we've never been before and uh, go, to, go to a place I've been talking a lot of shit about maybe twice next year. So it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Thank I know you. I didn't answer any of your questions, <laughs> but that's my answer. Thank you. Yes. Dana, right over here. Yep. Uh, talking a little bit about tonight, when it comes to seeing the talent, and you've been at this for a really long time, whether it's tough, whether it's contender series, what is it after all these years that makes you so excited about the next generation and finding that new talent to build the UFC? Well, one of the things that I, that I notice is that every, like you said, generation of talent just keeps getting better and better and more well-rounded and more athletic. Um, and obviously, there's, you know, the sport is so much bigger. And now we're really... I was talking about Mexico yesterday, too, which is a bit, you know, obviously Mexico is a big, um, I have big plans for Mexico over the next couple of years. And we're opening the PI in Mexico. And my vision while I am here, I don't know if this will continue when I leave. It probably will not. But my vision is I want to open as many of these PIs as possible. It's, it's reinvesting back in the sport. And these things cost tens of millions of dollars to build, operate, uh, you know, um, fill with employees and, and fighters. And I want one, I want this one in Mexico. We got one in China. We got one in Vegas. We'll have one in the Middle East. And I want one in Africa. These are the, these are the spots that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at right now. And as, as we go into these different territories, and, and open these PIs, you'll have the, the, these, if you look throughout the history of fighting, you go to places where living is hard and, and people have hard times and people come up with rough upbringings. That's where you find some of the baddest people in the world. And, you know, as we get into these markets and start cranking, not every kid that's going to come out of there is going to become a fighter or a world champion, but some will become coaches and jiu-jitsu instructors and striking and who else, but they'll be involved in the sport some way, somehow. And some will just come out fans. Um, and, and, and we are gonna continue to do this while I'm here and, and spend this money and reinvest this money back into the sport. Um, like I'm telling you guys next year, all these different countries we're gonna go to. Um, you know, 
that's my, my like three year plan right now. I don't even know if I answered your question either, but I go off on these fucking rants. No, you absolutely did. I appreciate right, it. Uh, the other one for me, Max Holloway, you talked about Korean Zombie. I'm just curious of what you thought of his performance. Max Holloway? Yes. Uh, we talked about him today too in the meeting, obviously. Um, incredible. The guy has been on top of his game for so long. There's a couple of different options for him right now. One that I really love and we're probably going to do. So um, hopefully I'll announce that in the next couple months. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Dana, um, with Max winning, um, is there any consideration of holding an event in, in, in Hawaii? I know you said, you know, it's just it's kind of impossible right now. But with him being so big, um, with, you know, with Ma Maui right now with everything, like, is, is there any consideration of, of holding an event in Hawaii? There, there's, there's several issues with holding a, a, a fight in Hawaii for the UFC. The arenas, um, the cost of doing an event in Hawaii, um, you know, believe me, uh, me and all of my staff would love to pack up and go to Hawaii on a, on a, uh, on a, on a, for, for a week, you know what I mean? Every, everybody that works with the company would want to go to that event. And not to shit on any other place, but it's probably a hundred other places we would rather not go than go to Hawaii. We'd rather go to Hawaii, but it's just... It's tough to do. It's tough to do. Do you see UFC ever holding an, an event in Hawaii if, if they build a stadium or if they lower the costs? You know, it's funny you say that because we talked about that yesterday too. We covered a lot of stuff yesterday. And, and obviously the stuff that's going on in Hawaii right now, um, I'm very supportive of Hawaii and the people. And I'm, I'm kind of focused on that right now. Where this we, So for all of you, media and fans included that, that bought UFC Hawaii t-shirts, thank you. We're, we're over $200,000 in, in, in the Hawaii t-shirts, and I believe that we'll get over 300000 which will put us at like $1.3 million that we're going to donate to the people of Hawaii. And, and just like we did in Las Vegas when, the, when, when the, you know, the shooting happened here, we're trying to vet out right now. How do, how do we get the money to the right people? Who does it go to? You don't just send $1.3 million over there and say, hey, here you go. Good luck, everybody. We get, so we're, we're, we're working out the details on how to figure that out. And I am going to Hawaii. I'm going to go over there myself and, uh, and, and meet with whoever we end up donating this, this money to. And, uh, and I'm working on other possible things with Hawaii as far as events go. Just well, nothing I can talk about right now. I wanted to ask you one more thing about UFC 292. As soon as O'Malley knocked out Aljamain, his knockout was on YouTube. It was all over social media. That, it's a rare occurrence for the UFC to do that. What, what well, that UFC about? didn't do it. Um, ESPN did. So ESPN, uh, you know, bought the rights to the pay-per-views. So they wanted to put that out that night, and they wanted to promote that fight. Um, so they did. Yeah. Is that you think it's just a special O'Malley thing, or do you think that might happen going forward? Um, yeah, I, th I think that they obviously they saw the star potential in O'Malley that night, and I think that opening it up to everyone was like an investment in O'Malley. I don't know if that's the truth. You'd have to ask them that question, but that's that's why I think they did it. And one last one for me. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but The Rock bought Thimble Grimbo, uh a house. I didn't see it. I heard about it, though. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? It's, it's, it was pretty awesome. I think that The Rock is incredibly wealthy, and he could probably buy everybody on the fucking roster a house. <laughs> so, yeah, obviously a really nice thing to do. Um, you know, he connected with him through the seven bucks thing. You know, um, yeah. So, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Interview. You mentioned how vital the contender series has been a part of the UFC and the roster growth. But also another part was the ultimate fighter, right? Back in the day, a lot of the guys came from the ultimate fighter. After these two live finales in Boston, especially the Katona and Gibson fight, are you looking forward to placing these tough finales on big spotlights like a pay-per-view event or even just shining a bigger light on the future tough seasons? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I don't know. We talked about a lot of shit the last two days. We didn't talk about that um, or either one of those guys, but you're not wrong. I mean, that was a great fight. 
that was one of those fights that people were blowing me up saying, give them both a contract. They should both be in the UFC. And, and uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, th those guys delivered on, on, the, uh, on the finale. And uh, so you, uh, you said that you mentioned some locations. Is L.A. one of those possible locations that you guys might be returning to? In, in L.A.? Yeah. Southern California. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, not sure if you saw, but McGregor DM'd Sean O'Malley after he won his title fight against Aljamain Sterling. And uh, O'Malley called for a co main and co-main event between – or McGregor to be the main event of a card and Sugar to be the co-main of a card. I'm not – what are your thoughts on that? I didn't see that. Yeah, no, I didn't see it. It, it doesn't surprise me, though. You can tell that O'Malley respects Conor and what he built and what he's done and – you know, so it makes sense. And uh, one last one for me. It's hard to put anybody else that shares in pay-per-view on a pay-per-view with Conor McGregor. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, one last one for me. Was the UFC 295 co-main event something you're going to be announcing real soon here? Say that again? The UFC 295 co-main event to Jones and Stipe. You want to know what the co-main event is? Yeah, because, I mean, you said a couple weeks ago it might be the next week, and uh, we just haven't heard anything yet. Yeah, I have no clue right now. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, just jumping back to Max Holloway, I know a lot of times in the UFC we don't see trilogies that often, but is there a possibility that Max and Volk might get another shot? I just think that I think that Volkanovski is so dominant right now. I mean, there's people who believe he beat, uh, you know, Islam. You know, I, I don't know if you throw Max at him again at this point in Max's career. I don't love it. Do you love it? Then why'd you ask me that? Because people, people want to know. People want to know. People want to know? Tell people I think it's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> they just heard. Uh, last me, I think Alex Pahea was in the building. A lot of people say that, want to know if there's any move forward on that with the possibility of going against Yuri. And a lot of people are talking about maybe December might be a good opportunity for those guys. I know you guys are still looking for a main event for the December card. For Pahea, who? Alex Pahea and... Possibly Yiri. Yeah, yeah. Alex was in the here. I assume he met with you guys and yeah. you guys were um, talking stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> we like that one, though. Yeah, Thanks, Dana. We do. we do, too. Yeah. <laughs> Tell the people we like that one. Hey, Dave. Hi. Um, what exactly about Carlos, the welterweight contract winner, uh, reminded you of Anderson Silva? Oh, what, what did? Yeah. The way he moved. How, how relaxed he was, how fluent he was, the combinations that he put together, um, just everything about his whole uh, swagger tonight was, was very, uh, you know, old school Anderson Silva. Is that like quite an easy sell for like narrative going forward, someone that could, you know, perhaps follow in his footsteps if he reminds you so much of, you know. To, fo to follow in his footsteps? Yeah. W what's the question? Is it an easy sell to... Easy yeah, sell? Forward to well, I mean, if you watch the fight tonight, anything's an easy sell with that guy. That guy was smooth, slick, violent. Um, I, I mean, almost everything he threw landed. Uh, and, and, and none of it was wild. And, and it was all just, it was, it was fucking smooth is the only, the only thing that comes to mind when I think about it. It was just absolute, pure, smooth violence, man. That guy was, was beautiful tonight. Beautiful. Uh, John mentioned about comebacks with Conor McGregor and this screenshot. I think the Daily Mail had Ronda Rousey wanting to return for UFC 300. Had you seen that report? Is it something you'd welcome? Who reported that? Daily Mail, I think it was. I think it's been carried elsewhere. <laughs> Are you fucking asking me a question? That the Daily Mail posted something and you're asking me if it's true? Is that what you're I'm saying? I'm asking if it's true. I'm saying would you welcome it? Would I welcome it? Yeah, Ronda's having kids. Ronda, you know... Ronda built this whole thing that's going on with the women here. Then her dream was to go to the WWE. She went there and did everything she did there and achieved. She's made shitloads of money. She's moved on with her life. Stop reading the Daily Mail. Everything <laughs> they write is a crock of shit. One any, more, other, any other questions? One follow-up. Yeah. Um, there was a report um, that John Jones requested that Colby Covington not be the co-main event on his card. Is there any truth to that? Not that I know of. Is that what John said? Yeah. It's probably true then. <laughs> yeah, if John said it, it's probably true. Um, but not that I was aware of that he didn't want. What, 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 what's his problem with Colby Covington? I guess Colby, came, Colby went, they have history and Colby. Colby was, 
talking shit about him like he does everybody on earth. Basically. It was Colby who said John said it. John. Who said it? Colby said John said it. Oh, got it. So it's the, not quite John saying it. So John didn't say it. Colby said John said it. Well, there you go. That's some more Daily Mail for you right there. <laughs> All right? So basically, John didn't come to you and say, Colby, no. not on my card. I, I don't think John Jones could give a shit one way or the other. I, I'm literally, the only person I've ever seen John Jones truly hate and, and could not stand and would say, like, bad things about was Daniel Cormier. Other than him, I, I, I've never really seen that with John Jones. Maybe I'm wrong, but I've never seen it. I, I, John Jones is at a level that, what's he got to give a shit about anything? You know what I mean? The, the guy is literally the greatest fighter of all time in mixed martial arts. So I think he's worried about who's on the co-main event. Sorry, but man. I could be wrong. So I bounce yes. one last time. Uh, was Miami a city you guys want to come back to? I mean, after that crazy event at, in UFC 287? I think you guys will really like what we're talking about for Miami. I'm guessing it's going to be UFC 305 in Miami, right? 305? Ah, yeah. uh-huh. it took me a second. It took me a second. Not a bad fucking idea, though, buddy. Not a bad idea. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. You done with me? Good night, you guys.